getting so hot in the car, you can tell, and it's not even hot out today, and people can see me vlogging at the gym again. But such is life, you know, that that is what happens. But, um, you know, I just wanna say I'm proud of you guys today. If you moved your body or rested your body, if you did something that challenged you, even if that means skipping the gym, or if that means going to the gym, sticking to it, skipping a day, whatever it is, I'm proud of you, because today was effing hard. <laughs> Today was one of those days the whole day I was like, I'm not going to work out. I don't want to work out. I don't want to work out. I don't want to work out. And then I went and I did it and I feel great. Um, but that's not always the case and what is needed. And that's why I like to preach both ways that you should give yourself a pat on the back and be proud. Either way, whichever choice you made that was best for you, but celebrate yourself because that's what I'm doing, honey. That is what I'm doing. I need to, I need to update you guys a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Hey guys, so this is weird timing because I'm currently still waiting to edit last week's vlog footage. Everything's sort of a disaster. My laptop completely stopped working to process and edit movies, so I can't use iMovie, I cannot edit, or do any of the things I need to to get YouTube videos up. Um, and then in last week's reading vlog, you'll have heard me talk about how my schedule is changing and things like that. But I wanted to at least update about the books I'm reading to you guys now on the camera before I forget while well, it's fresh in my mind, even though it's gonna be a minute before you guys see this footage. So I wanted to sit down for a second and talk to you about Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asiman, which I absolutely fell in love with. This book broke my heart. This book destroyed me in the best way. I absolutely freaking loved it. I wanted to read some quotes for you. Paul just got home, so this is gonna have to wait. <gasps> I love this for me. Okay, to be continued. Okay. <laughs> Here we are, let's try again. Don't mind the heat rash, I just took my hoodie off from the gym. Um, you know, it's all good. So let's talk about this baby right here, this beauty, this love. Call me by your name. I wanna read some quotes. And Paul told me, he was looking it up, cause I was like, will you please watch the movie with me? And I did not know that Timothy Chalamet was in it. And once I learned that, I was like, <laughs> okay, we're watching immediately, please which of course we've not yet had time. However, I would really like to get to it soon. As I said, I was trying to read Paul some of these quotes yesterday and it was immediately like making me, I don't tear up, I just get nauseous. Like when things are sad to me, I get nauseous thinking about it. And I think it's because it takes me back to when I've had similar types of feelings in my life. So it's a good thing. So this is one of the most popular quotes. It says, we rip out so much of ourselves to be cured of things faster than we should that we go bankrupt by the age of 30 and have less to offer each time we start with someone new. But to feel nothing so as not to feel anything. What a waste. That just gets me every time I read it. I'm like you, he said. I remember everything. We had the stars, you and I, and this is given once only. I feel like that is a such... Oh, the feeling that that gives me about like first love, first feelings you have, I, I can't describe it. I know that some of you guys would feel the same way. He came, he left, nothing else had changed. I had not changed, the world hadn't changed, yet nothing would be the same. All that remains is dream making and strange remembrance. That guts me. People who read are hiders. They hide who they are. People who hide don't always like who they are. If I could have him like this in my dreams every night of my life, I'd, say, I'd stake my entire life on dreams and be done with the rest. Most of us can't help but live as though we've got two lives to live. One is the mock-up, the other the finished version, and then there are all those versions in between. But there's only one, and before you know it, your heart is worn out, and as for your body, there comes a point when no one looks at it, much less wants to come near it. Right now, there's sorrow. I don't envy the pain, but I envy you the pain. Time makes us sentimental. Perhaps in the end, it is because of time that we suffer. So I don't want to read you the last passage of the book. I do the last paragraph. It like breaks my heart, but I don't want to read it just because I don't want to read it ahead of time in case you guys do read this book. Not that it gives anything away or that you don't need to know or like you should avoid spoilers or anything like that, but 
I definitely wouldn't want to read the last line of a book before getting into it, but the writing is breathtaking. It is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. Um, the story was lovely and I saw some complaints from people saying they wish that it was longer. I disagree. For me, it was a perfect length. I did not need this long drawn out story of every single interaction these characters had. I wanted these most important aspects of the defining moments of their relationship told in a non-linear form, non format because this book discusses time a lot. It is time that makes us suffer and the way that they remember things and you recall things is not always linear. So I'm just obsessed with this at this moment and I'm gonna live it up. Now the other thing that I had been reading and I finished this morning and I have very mixed thoughts about it is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I went into this only knowing what people said about this woman taking photographs of younger boys and men. And while that definitely happens, I do not think that it's told in the way that you would expect. This really has been the month of like reading unhinged women characters. And I'm just gonna say, I don't know, you don't know in the beginning how reliable this character is. And I don't wanna say anything that gives spoilers, but I loved the way that it ended. The ending really packed a punch to me and I'm dying to discuss it with somebody because I don't even know what I think yet. It is a bit confusing. And I don't even know if you're supposed to really have a true answer, like a right or wrong of what is going on. Um, but yeah, this main protagonist, she reminds me of the main character and the friendship actually from My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mashfe. I hate both of these main characters in the books. This one is also awful. I mean, she's a bad person. She's a bad friend. She's absolutely terrible to the men she meets. She uses people, manipulates them, exploits them. Um, but it's in a much more acceptable way than I figured it would be. Like, I thought we were going to be watching this woman who is like hated by everybody, not like maintaining this normal life. But she's a normal life of friends and family and such where she's sort of hiding these other secret parts. But then like also she's an artist. She is asked to do this art show where she features these pictures exploiting men and taking advantage of them. So like people know what she's doing. So I don't know, it's, it's very interesting and it makes you very uncomfortable. There's a lot of scenes that are super terrible. You definitely feel for the men in this book quite a lot. And if you wanna read a book about a possibly unreliable narrator of a woman that you will hate, then pick this up. But I think I did like it a bit more than I anticipated um, because it is different. I wanna read this one quote it says, I explained to him that nothing matters and nothing lasts. Everyone forgets and everything disappears. The things you do, the things you are, it's all nothing. Would anyone miss you if you went away? Would anyone look for you? Would anyone listen or even care if I hurt you? If I put my hands around your neck and crushed your windpipe and chopped you up, would anyone find you? And if it's a no to any of these, did you even exist in the first place? So she is pretty cruel. And then this, this is, Pretty explicit, so bear with me. I look at the photos again, the ones I didn't delete. I look at his purple face, his bloody chin and nipple, his swollen cheeks. I wonder what the fuck I have to do for people to recognize me as a threat, you know? It's like, am I even doing this shit? Have I even fucking done anything? Like, do I have to snap the wine bottle inside him to get him to stop sending me sad emails? Do I have to cut his nipple off for him to realize he should probably ring the police? Do I have to cave his head in with my camera rather than hit him once? Do I have to crash his car? Do I have to smash a glass over the head of every single man I come into contact with? just so I leave a fucking mark. That is the vibe of this book. One more I wanted to read, it says, I remember the lurch in my stomach when he grabbed my wrist a little harder than I expected. It got better when I got someone rough, when it felt like I really might get hurt, when I did get hurt. But that just turned into Tuesdays, you know? You do anything enough and you can get sick of it, particularly when you're doing stuff to self-destruct not because you actually like it. It took me a while to work out what I like. So that's that, I have finished it now. I recommend this with caution. I do not actually think this book is as accessible as far as being liked by a wide range of people. I really think a lot of people won't like this book um, because I had always seen it advertised as like something that everyone will love. And that being said, like I did really enjoy it and I'm glad that I read it 
but I'm really ready to move on from it and I wanted something totally different. So we'll see what I pick up next when it comes to a physical book. But the audio book that I decided to start next is one that Paul got me for Easter and that's The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. I'm farther into this now. I think I'm 36% of the way through, maybe just got to, I wanna find it. I just got to book two, which is Jonas is Jonas's POV. So chapter 13, and that is page 141. So I'm about that far through. Now, I don't like cheating, so it's surprising that I'm enjoying this book, right? When we begin with this woman and man cheating on their husband and wife in the room next to her mother, like with their families there. And I mean, they do it outside, so it's not like they can hear them. But so the scene starts there and then in that present timeline, we follow them and their families to the beach. We watch each of them interact with their um, spouse as this has happened and their spouses don't know it yet. But in between, we get tons of flashback scenes to the past and we learn about Elle, uh, it's Eleanor, right? I think she goes by Elle, but we learn about her very, not great upbringing, not great mother and grandmother and a father who wasn't there for her often and grandfather, like she just does not have a wholesome, nice family upbringing whatsoever. I'm wondering if we're switching to Jonas's POV and if we'll get like his backstory, but basically, shoot, I don't wanna get that away, give that away. Right before we got to book two, we sort of learned something about Elle and Jonas in their past but we need like all the details of like why that happened. So I'm thinking we're gonna get to that now. I love the current day timeline, which is shocking because it's generally, like I said, cheating is not something I wanna read about. And it's not something I even find interesting usually reading about relationships, but this one keeps you very on the edge of your seat because you feel like you're keeping the secret with them from their spouses. But I will say there are times when we get the flashbacks that are super interesting and relevant information. And there are other times when I'm zoning out and not enjoying those flashback periods as much, even though I'm sure they are important in the character development as a whole. Um, they just don't grip me the way that our present day timeline does. So I almost wish we got less flashbacks or just there were more gripping pieces of information more frequently and we'll see, like I said, I'm only that far through, so I have a ways left to go, but that is pretty much all that I'm reading right now. Now I need to go get my zucchini that's been cooking and um, make some protein pancakes and then put together this Mac desktop computer that I am not looking forward to doing whatsoever since my laptop is not working. I mean, I can do like an internet search on it. I still have my laptop. I can do a video stream, but it, it, it's cooked. Like I can't process videos. I can't edit. I can't upgrade, update any apps or iMovie or anything. None of it is able to be used. So I need to do that. And that is why all my videos are late. All right, guys, here she is I'm about to try to set this up. Okay, guys, I've made it to, I've got to be at like 60% of the way through the paper palace at this point. I just left the gym, finished the glute day, got my cardio done, got my workout done. Feels freaking fabulous because it's 11 o'clock. I tried to make myself sleep till after seven and then just rest because I've been so behind lately. Um, but yeah, so paper palace, lots of thoughts that I will update you guys more on later. Um, I love parts of it. Really, really, really don't care too much for other parts of it. Overall, right now, I will just leave you with the fact that I'm very, very underwhelmed and disappointed because it was so highly praised and there's just a lot about it that doesn't really work and kind of misses the mark for me so I'm gonna go home and shower and then get some breakfast avocado toast and smoothie time and then I have some recording and editing to do before a very very busy weekend okay guys let's do a quick little update before I need to go eat some lunch and go get these nails taken care of I just filmed a couple videos since it's Memorial Day weekend and will not have time to film on Monday because I work next Friday. So I had to get that done, but I wanted to update what I have been reading. So first of all, let's just do a quick update since I've already spoken to you guys about The Paper Palace by Miranda Coley Heller. I am nearly finished with this. I think less than like 60 or 70 pages left. And I'm just so underwhelmed and disappointed. I mean, it's not bad. I'm not mad that I'm reading it. I don't regret reading it. I'm glad that I 
am in on the conversation, but I think it was so praised and well loved and hyped that I'm just so underwhelmed. That's the only thing I can say. I think that the present day story is interesting, but I think so much of the past timeline is boring. Like I'm very bored to where I'm zoning out. I don't understand the author's choice for why she chose to focus on such things that didn't seem like having a big effect on the big picture overall. So that is a bit confusing to me. I also don't like love triangles, I guess. Like, I think I will stay away from love triangles in the future. I just don't, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't even know how to say it. Like, I knew it was a love triangle going in. And I do think the present day concept is interesting. And I really want to find out, even though one of you guys spoiled it for me on Instagram, which sucks. But like, I want to see how it goes down, I guess. Um... But yeah, so I'm nearly finished with it. I will give you my full thoughts later on. I was saying in my wrap up too, when I was talking about my initial thoughts about this, that I just think having so many like child molestation and rape and sexual assault scenes is unnecessary for this book. Like it just, it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel like it should be here. It feels like the author just didn't know what else to do or just wanted to give these characters like a tragic backstory. I don't know. I rarely feel like that when I read these things. I rarely ever feel like that because I read about these themes and topics and events very often and it doesn't generally come across that way. I never have an issue with it and in this one I just really did so I don't know. I would love to hear if any of you guys feel similar to me about this book because it just is so well loved and I don't know why it's missing the mark for me. The other one I'll update you about quickly is the physical book I decided to read this morning. Oh, actually, yesterday I did pick up my next physical book after finishing Boy Parts, and that is Violets by Alex Hyde, which is following two women named Violet in the time of like World War II, I believe. One has just lost her babies, and then the other one is just getting pregnant, and she doesn't want to be pregnant. So we obviously have two very different perspectives about motherhood and different, one is single, the other is married and her husband is going off to war and the other one just had like an affair with a soldier who was staying there. Um, so I am only on page 35 about that far through. I didn't realize this was written in like vignettes or verse, whatever you want to call it, but there's actually like poetry in it. And while I generally love poetry, it's not working for me in the format. The story is very interesting in its idea and concept, but the execution of the storytelling style is not working. So I'm going to slowly make my way through this. Not, it's not going to be the only thing I'm physically reading right now because I think I would get burnt out on it. So what I decided to pick up this morning during cardio is The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells, which is translated, I think, from the German by Charlotte Collins. I wish there was that page. Yeah, I think it is translated from the German. So anyways, this is following Jules. In the beginning, we're following a, an adult man who I think has just gotten in an accident. And then we flash back to 1980 following Jules and his siblings. He has an older brother and sister. And the sister is the oldest and it is following these tragic events of their childhood, the relationships between the siblings, the relationships romantically that they get involved with, different family members. I'm about a third of the way through. So about 85 pages of a 250 page novel and I'm already so invested and so attached to these characters that I'm blown away. I think the writing is amazing. This main character, first of all, I needed to read a male POV at this point in time. I needed a male POV with all the unhinged women characters I've been reading lately. So I absolutely love being in Jules' mind and following him and how he just feels about the world. Let's read some quotes because that's what we're here for. This is a child thinking these things. This is Jules. He says, do you know what I sometimes think? I wiped my top lip, lip and looked at her belligerently. All this is like a seed, the school, boarding, what happened to my parents, all this has been sown in me, but I can't see what it's making of me. The harvest only comes when I'm grown up and then it's too late. Like what child thinks that way? He's talking about his siblings and he says, Liz shook her head. She'd always seemed to only ever live in the present and forgot a lot of things because she didn't remember something he was referring to from the past. Whereas I like to spend a long time contemplating my experiences and thinking about how to classify them. 
Once again, he's a child saying this. This description of him talking about a book with um, a girl that he's friends with says, Please, Jules, I want to know what you think of it. The way the characters wander around alone at night, so restless. Eventually, they all end up in this cafe, the only one that's also open at night. She always got so excited when she talked about books. I'd like to be a, liter a literary character like that, one who wanders around the city alone in the dark and goes to a cafe after midnight. Ava's voice was quiet, but her eyes were sparkling. I liked that a lot. This is how his brother feels. Love, he said, it's a stupid literary concept, Jules. It's just chemical reactions. Oh, I love this. As I ran down the stairs, I felt the most tremendous rage. I didn't want to be just a boy anymore. I wanted to shake off all traces of youthfulness. I would have thrashed them out of myself if I could. Alva's mother was standing at the bottom of the stairs with two dogs. She tried to say something, but I ran away out of the village and straight across the adjoining fields without looking back. I loved what that had to say about like, when you're ready to leave your childhood behind. Oh no, this clip is getting too long. Okay, so I, as I said, I'm only 85-ish pages in. That's all I could read during the time of me doing cardio this morning. Um, so all I can say, we've we've moved a little bit later now into like adulthood. I think 24-ish our main character is now. And he was like very little in the beginning, like not even 10. Um, so we have moved through such a great span of time and I feel so attached to the characters. It's just wild. Every time that happens with an author, I'm blown away by it. So anyways, loving this, loving the writing, loving the story, characterization, sibling relationships, dynamics, all of it. So here you have the three books I'm currently reading. Okay guys, so when I was out and about, Waiting to get my nails done, driving to get my nails done. I finished The Paper Palace and yeah, I'm glad I read it so that I know what all the fuss is about. I don't regret reading it. It was a fine read, but all of the same thoughts as before hold true. I am very happy with the choice that our main character made. I think she made the right decision for the life that she was living now. And, um, but also I think, I don't want to say anything spoilery, but I think that she made a ton of bad decisions and that, I don't know, I pretty much hate her because how can you do that to somebody that you say you love so much? So, um, that's pretty much all the thoughts that I have. You guys know reading about cheating just is not for me and I don't know why I continue to do so. Um, so I need to remember for next time to not read a book about cheating again because it's just not something I ever care to read about. So yeah, this is done. And I don't think I'll read from this author again. I don't know, I, did, I wasn't blown away by the writing or the execution of the timeline and plot and novel itself. And like I said, I had a lot of issues with like all of the graphic sexual abuse that she put in this just felt unnecessary. And that's just my personal opinion. Like I said, I don't feel that way very often at all about books. So. There's that, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Here are my nails, I love them so much. I think I'm gonna go read for a bit, maybe. Hello, do you wanna see, oh, the cutest thing ever. She's just lounging, just straight chilling, rolling around like a little ham that she is in the background. But wanted to quickly update you guys while Paul's mowing the grass. It's the holiday weekend, it's been super busy, so I don't have long. I just had to film a couple things for Patreon, but I have finished a book and started a new audiobook and made my way through a bit of it, so I wanted to update. Um, first, I wanted to gush with my whole entire heart about The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells, translated from the German by Charlotte Collins. Holy love of God, this is so freaking good. This is in my top five books of the year. This is so underhyped. Unbelievable that this book isn't being gushed about on BookTube and Bookstagram. It is 256 pages. Can you see all of those tabs? I'm gonna have to like come back and read you guys some quotes later on when I'm not so busy later on in the week, but it was absolutely stunning. First of all, the writing was phenomenal. Second of all, characterization was so well done, so believable, so realistic. The use of time and the jump around, the jumps around that we made in these siblings' lives. I think I mentioned before that it's following three siblings, an older sister, two younger brothers, and the tragedies that happened to them. It's not like torture porn, like Betty or A Little Life. It is very sad. It is dealing with grief and loneliness and um, 
the meaning of life and the value of time and the value of friendship and those that you love and make connections with in life. And it is so stunningly beautiful. Like there were so many times I turned down like every page. So I'm gonna go through, I know you really wanna see that girl, not me. I'm gonna go through and highlight, actually like mark this up because I like to do that and then come back and read to you guys. So that way I can kind of decide rather than just flipping through quickly now to read you some passages. The ending was absolutely beautiful. Like I said, it is very sad, but not in a way that just felt like intentionally heartbreaking. And I love these siblings. I love this family. I love the setting. I have convinced Paul to go to Italy with me um, as soon as possible. So probably 2000, is it 22 right now? Probably 2023, we're gonna be going to Italy because I, I can't, it's just, it's showing up in like every book I read lately and it is in this one as well that they travel to. The um, descriptions are like lush and, but not too dramatic. I mean, the story is told in 256 pages and you get an entire like lifespan of these siblings. How did the author do that successfully? I don't know, but I don't know if this is a, um, debut or what all i know is i will be looking to see what else this author has published if they have anything else because it was so freaking good i'm just i'm so beyond impressed so yeah i am so happy that i read this i am so thankful that i was gifted this and i just urge everyone who's interested to pick this up oh you probably just heard the the blower what do you call that thing that gets all the grass off the sidewalks so the other thing that I decided to pick up on audio is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abidare. And this is such a phenomenal audio book. I'm not super far in. I'm on page 82, which is chapter 14. So that far into it. Um, if you're going to read this, I highly recommend that you go the audiobook route because it is narrated by somebody with a beautiful accent that puts you right into the story, but also like the dialect and the way that the dialogue is spoken comes to life by listening to it. And I know that I struggle a little bit more when I try to read that physically. So I think that you, you would have the best experience possible by listening to the audiobook. but we're following Aduni, I think is her name. She's 14 in Nigeria and she wants an education. She wants her louding voice. She wants to speak for herself. But she, um, okay, the only daughter of a broke father, she's a valuable commodity. So she's taken out of school and sold to this man to be his third wife and she needs to bear him two children, two boys. So that's about as far as I know right now and already it is so heartbreaking. Like the way that the narrator is able to convey these emotions that the author wrote on the page in combination with the writing of this author is just a beautiful combination. It works so well together. And as I'm listening to it, I just feel like a knife through the heart because it is so sad. And you just, you feel like such a young girl and the things that she's having to go through. And they're not um, like exploited in any way. Like there's of course like non-consexual sex and very terrible things that she has to endure and like abuse and things but they're not graphic and it's not a I mean it's hard to read in any case because those things are terrible but it's not done in a way that would be off-putting to a lot of people who don't like to read about that type of thing um it's just done with a lot of taste I would say and and I just I love the writing so I'm gushing about this I do have to say with accents and audiobooks I always struggle like if it's an Irish accent I have to listen at like one time speed um same thing with this I'm listening like almost one time speed because otherwise I miss like every other word it's just my brain can't keep up um, with different accents sometimes. So I'm just listening very slowly, but it's totally worth it to consume the story slower. When I started this, I wasn't sure what too much to think of it. I was thinking like, okay, I've heard this book is quite praised. I might like it. Um, I better read it just because I feel like I need to, FOMO, whatever. And then as I continue to read it, I think it's going to be so impactful and leave such a like mark in my mind and it's definitely a story that needs to be told. So when I read the synopsis a little bit more right now, I think there's gonna be a bit of a mystery to it, which I haven't really gotten to yet. So I suppose we'll see. But yeah, so this is the audiobook that I'm reading. I guess I'll tell you right now too, 
the um, next physical book I'm going to pick up is is actually The Idiot by Elif Batuman. I don't know if that's how you say that or not. Um, this is a Patreon buddy read. A couple of us are going to be buddy reading together because she just had the sequel come out to this and I had no idea that the second book that she was right. Well, actually, I don't know if they're her only two books, but I didn't know that the one that just came out is a sequel to this. And I think I've heard that they continue like very closely after one another. And I really didn't know what to expect from this. So I asked my friend who's doing a reread of it, like what the vibe is. And I can't remember what she said. I'm on, oh, it's on, it's on Discord somewhere, but whatever it was, it was like, not exactly sad girl lit but like funny so humorous a little bit of like that darker melancholy type of woman i think so i really don't know the year is 1995 and email is new selen the daughter of turkish immigrants arrives for her freshman year at harvard where she signs up for classes and subjects she has never heard of befriends her charismatic serbian classmate Svetlana, and almost by accident begins corresponding with Ivan, an older mathematics student. Her summer does not resonate with anything she's previously heard about the typical experience of college students, but rather the beginning of a journey further inside herself, a coming to grips with the ineffable and exhilarating confusion of first love and with the growing consciousness that she is doomed to become a writer. Elif Batuman dr dramatizes the uncertainty of life on the cusp of adulthood. It's a heroic yet self-effacing reckoning with the terror and joy of becoming a person in a world that is intoxicating, that is as intoxicating as it is disquieting. And it says, somebody's blurb says, easily the funniest book I've read this year. So I could use a little humor. I don't want anything like some of the books I read last month, like My Year of Re Rest and Relaxation and boy parts not in the mood for that so i'm hoping this is very different but like similar types of exploration of ideas maybe i don't know but it's long so unfortunately it's gonna take me forever to read because i am a slow reader these days so this is what i'm listening to this is what i'll be picking up next this is what i finished there you have it i really need to go be productive and get stuff done before i head to my friend's house we were out in port huron yesterday and we need to head to williams lake today and then tomorrow is a barbecue at my house so busy times. It's lunchtime. I am watching over here Simon's new video celebrating six years on booktube. I haven't shown you my food in a while, so I just cut up like cauliflower florets, put nutritional yeast flakes on them, and then eat with a salsa. And then I have a little snack of some PB2 and rice cakes with sugar-free jelly, because best dessert ever. Okay guys, I wanted to do a quick update before I start a new book, because the book I started after I finished the and of loneliness is one that we like randomly last minute decided we're gonna do on Patreon. And that is The Idiot. I think I told you guys this by Elif Batuman. Okay, I'm nearly a hundred pages in right now and I can't do it. I literally cannot do it. I knew nothing about this book other than I have seen it on Bookstagram three billion times in my life and people seem to quite enjoy it. Um, or it was a miss for them, but I never looked into the reasons why people didn't like it which I don't generally like to do ahead of time because that can definitely influence my feelings about a book. So I just wanted to go in kind of blind. That is what I did. We're following Selin and she's at Harvard. She has some roommates, she has some classmates and we're going to school with her. And we're literally doing her assignments with her and we're learning what she's learning. And like, yo, I'm over school and I wanna learn with you. I literally do not wanna learn what you're learning in school. Absolutely not, like especially in my free time. I don't find her character particularly interesting. Likeable, unlikable, she's rather bland. Um, there are also these excerpts from her Russian class where she has to read this very basic level novel about Nina in Russia. And we're reading that book as well. That, that book has been very prevalent throughout this, not just like a passage here and there, it's all the time. I, I do not understand. Like I just literally, I do not understand why people like this book. Please tell me why you like this book. And I realize I'm giving up about um, a quarter, 
around a quarter of the way through it because it's just over 400 pages and I'm about 100 pages in. But for now, there, I just do not see myself being able to continue on with it. Beautiful looking book and it's a nice like paperback to read. Like I enjoy holding this book when I'm reading it. And that is about it. I made it 100 pages in, not tabbed a single page. I can't remember the last time that happened. I feel like even in the books that I've not loved recently, like there's still been certain quotes or passages or lines that have really stood out to me. So this, I just can't bring myself to finish. And I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this book if you guys have read it um if you like this book let me know and if you are like me and you could not push through and finish this book i would also like to know so what i do believe i'll pick up next since tomorrow is the first of the month is the goddess chronicle by natsuo carino which is our patreon buddy read of the month so that's the one i do the spoiler filled vlog for my patrons for and fingers crossed i really hope that i enjoy that one but I just, I, I like how it says an addictive sprawling epic. I wolfed it down. Like, like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's nothing interesting in this book so far at all to me. I'm so sorry if you love this. It's just not it for me. to give a quick little update that I finally started another fantasy book and it is a Patreon buddy read pick for the month of June. So we are reading The Goddess Chronicle by Natsuo Carino. This is translated from the Japanese by Rebecca Copeland and this is a feminist myth retelling. So I do film spoiler filled reading vlogs for my patrons. So if you want to know my in-depth thoughts about this book, all the information for that will be in the description box below. But this is following the story of a girl. I'll read you the first part of this first page. So this is not a spoiler. Born on an island far, far to the south. I was barely 16 when I died. Now I make my home among the dead here in this realm of darkness. Um, and she says like, how did this come to pass? And she's basically going to tell us her story of how she is speaking for this goddess who governs the realm of the dead. Very interesting. So I'm only on page 70. I'm about that far in close to a third of the way through it. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm really glad that I'm reading it. It's like my perfect transition back into reading some fantasy. There is no like really dark things. There's no abuse towards women for the most part so far and it's super fast paced. It's a page turner. It's very intriguing. Like you just want to find out what's going to happen to the characters and like what choices they're going to make and if there's consequences to their choices. This is a myth that I'm not familiar with. So I really don't know what to expect of this retelling, but I'm super into it so far. And yeah, I think, like I said, it's the perfect book to pick up if you're not really vibing with like your classic fantasy type of tale you just want a little bit of fantastical elements um and something a little bit refreshing even though it is a retelling or inspired by the myth of it doesn't it feels like a fresh voice and maybe that's because it is translated from the japanese i'm not exactly sure but i have very high hopes for this and i'm hoping that once my patrons start reading it that they will enjoy it as well um I think I already told you guys I did decide to totally DNF Violets and the idiot. I did tell you that. And then I'm almost finished with the girl with the louding voice, which my copy is out in the kitchen. and I'm not going to go get it right now. But um, yeah, I, I am like 91% of the way through something like that. And it's really different from what I expected. I definitely really enjoy it. I think that also it's a little bit less impactful than I thought it would be just based on like how high of praise that it has. But don't get me wrong, it's still 
absolutely a book worth reading and that I'm enjoying my time reading it absolutely or listening to it, I cannot stress to you how much I think you should go the audiobook route. If you are going to read this book, please listen to the audiobook for it. Um, so yeah, I really, really do enjoy it. It just, to me, even though it's not, it feels like a young adult book. Like it feels very young adult. And maybe because our main protagonist is so young, she is faced with adult trials, absolutely. Um, or maybe it's because we're going through her learning English and things like that. So we only know what she knows and she's being taught a very basic level of English and education because she hasn't had one. And that's the point of the book is she wants a chance at an education so that she can become a woman whose voice can be heard and she can make a difference. So, you know, the themes are great and the characters are great. And she, uh, our main character is very, very lovable. And you just are rooting for her the whole time and you want nothing but the best for her. So I will give you a little bit more in-depth thoughts once I finish that book. Hopefully tomorrow, I'm guessing tomorrow morning, because then wait till you see the next book I'm reading gonna die because I'm gonna die I'm gonna give it a fair shot I do not promise I won't DNF it but I suppose you'll find out after I finish the girl with the louding voice more updates tomorrow are you ready I'm record are you getting ready to record I'm recording right now Paul I've never been more ready Okay guys, it's time to end this vlog, coming at you post-gym again, but I just wanted to give you a couple final updates. You will have to stay tuned for a couple newer updates for next week's reading vlog, but I wanted to wrap some things up before that begins. So as I said, it was a very busy weekend last weekend with the holiday and such, so I'm sorry I didn't take you guys with me for everything with friends, because that just can get a little bit weird because people don't necessarily want to be on your YouTube, booktube channel. So when it comes to reading. I finished a lot of things in this reading vlog, I feel like, but the thing that I finished this morning was The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abidare. Most of my thoughts and feelings um, remain the same as last time I updated you guys. So basically, I think that it was a very worthwhile read. It was an enjoyable story. It was very heart-wrenching and sad. It was an important story to hear and be told. I think that Adune, the main character, is very heartwarming and endearing and somebody that you just really are rooting for and enjoy following. So like, I liked the characters. I didn't care as much about like the mystery plot line. And I think honestly, the story had more potential than what happened, but it was the story the author wanted to tell and who am I to criticize that. So like, I would absolutely read more from this author in the future. I'm not sure if this is a debut. I feel like there's a bug on me because I don't see any other books listed by this author. And like, I don't know, I enjoyed all of the little bits of the book of Nigerian facts from past to present fifth edition, the little chapter headers where we learned. So like, I feel like I did learn things about Nigeria and life in Nigeria and culture and people and just sort of how society functions to some like tiny, tiny, tiny degree while reading this. And Adune, Adune was, like I said, such a lovable character, but I just feel like we could have done more with her and where she goes with wanting to get this education and the changes that she is trying to make for other girls like her. Um, so I think it was kind of like surface level. Some of the things have been done before, but that being said, I still recommend it if you are interested in reading this. I don't think I have too much more to say other than do listen to the audiobook. And then I am now almost halfway, I think 40% of the way through The Goddess Chronicles, so page one. 41 and like I said in the last clip I'm reading this for my patron spoiler filled vlog so I won't say more but just quick fast paced interesting intriguing myth retelling that is a page turner you definitely just want to find out what happens and I love reading about like myths I guess like I I always love that in fantasies legends um it's not necessarily like magic you have to keep track of it's more like being told a campfire story or a bedtime story where we're learning about the history of how the world came to be or how gods and goddesses came to be and to create the realm and be in charge of certain areas 
um, especially when it comes to conflicts between the sexes type of thing. So my heart goes out to the girls in this because they've definitely got it rough. And I'm very much looking forward to continuing on and seeing where we go from here. Um, and I'm going to save the rest of the updates as to what I'm reading now or what I've just DNF'd for next week's reading vlog. So stay tuned for that. If you have made it this far, what should our emoji be? I guess something for the Goddess Chronicle. So give me whether it's a teardrop or something to do with the ocean. It could be a seashell, it could be ocean waves, anything oceany to represent this read and my foray back into fantasy. Um, give me an ocean vibes emoji if you have made it this far. Hope you guys are having a lovely Friday and I hope that your weekend is wonderful. And I hope you get lots of reading done or lots of rest. Um, and no reading if that's what you choose to do. Oh, I forgot to tell you really quickly that we watched the first episode of Obi-Wan last night and oh my God, it was so good. Like it was so good. My little Star Wars loving heart was screaming just to see um, Ewan McGregor back on the screen again and I was loving it and I love the little actress who plays Leia Organa as well. Like, oh my God. So I cannot wait to find out what happens um, in the episodes to come. And it also kind of got me back on a Star Wars kick. So I used an Audible credit for Brotherhood, the new Obi-Wan book that just came out, I think, possibly in May. I don't know, Paul and I saw it the last time we were at the bookstore and I was like, I need to read that. I don't know if you guys know, but I've read a ton of Star Wars books in the past. And that was one of my goals this year was to continue on my Star Wars reading journey. So Brotherhood will be the first one. And then I think there's one called Padawan um, that I just placed a hold on as well. So hopefully I'll get to listen to that soon. And that's all for now. Okay, for real, for real. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.